5th of June 1983, you two are to play the most important show of their career. They had decided to film the concert, putting all of their savings into the filming. The venue, the Red Rocks Amphitheater in Denver, Colorado. Imagine that, rocking out under the stars with thousands of fans raptured by the music and the scenery. But on that 5th of June, things are not going as planned. Heavy rain is pouring down. The concert is now a serious health risk for everyone involved. Playing electric instruments means the sea of electric gears under a pouring rain. One badly shielded cable and zap, you're dead. But cancelling the event would bankrupt you too. When the opening acts cancel their performances, the public assumes that the whole concert will be called off. Five hours before the show, you two have to decide what to do. Would they accept the giant gamble and go on? Hello, Topatters. This is Simon Mas, your friend with a music degree and a taste for rhetorical questions. Of course you two took the gamble, otherwise there wouldn't be much of a story to tell, don't you think? Let's take a step back to really appreciate what was at stake here. You two had decided to film one performance of the American leg of their 1983 war tour. The tour was going well and having a film could help push the band even further and who knows, get them some extra money too. All fine and dandy, but then it turned out the estimated filming cost were 250,000 US dollars. About $780,000 in 2023 money. Why so much? Well, for a start, the venue was special. The Red Rock Amphitheater, not your average town hall, that cost extra. Then there were hidden costs, like that of lighting up the venue properly so that the filming crew could do their job and get the most impressive backdrop possible. That alone cost about a sixth of the whole budget. Add the transportation of audio and video equipment up into the mountains. Then there were other issues. YouTube manager Paul McGuinness insisted on flying a film crew from the UK. It was fundamental to have a director and operators that knew about rock and roll, because those figures didn't exist in the States. If you wanted to film a concert, you would get a kid who had experience with football. An audio crew was to come in from Boston. I'm surprised the bill wasn't even higher. Well, U2's total savings amounted to about $30,000. Concert promoter Barry Fay and U2's record label Island Records decided to chip in. Together with the band, they formed a joint production company to finance the project. After all, on paper, it looked like a safe bet. U2 were routinely selling out US venues about the same size as the Red Rocks Amphitheater. The concert revenue would have helped offset a good chunk of the production costs. The radio broadcasting rights were sold to NBC. TV rights in the US were sold to Showtime Cable Network and MTV. When all was said and done, the film would generate a healthy profit to split up. Or so it seemed. But that 5th of June morning was dark with heavy rain, snow in the mountains. What now? Bringing the equipment to the amphitheater high up in the mountain was no parking a car, as you can imagine. But when the snow turned into heavier rain, even getting everything together became dangerous. That's when support tax, the alarm and die vinyls cancelled their sets. The crew pushed you two to call the whole thing off. Safety first, you know. Not just for the crew themselves or for you too, but for the fans too. Driving to the concert on streets covered with ice under a pouring rain was hardly ideal for anyone. 
but you too simply didn't have that option. They were too much into debt. Cancelling the show meant reimbursing all the tickets, but all the rented equipment, all the expenses for flying in the crew, nobody was going to reimburse that to the production company. And without a film, there would have been no money coming from radio or TV broadcasts. Cancelling meant bankrupting YouTube, plain and simple. But then, the band honestly felt they owed something to the fans too. To those who had traveled to Denver to see them live. And yet, they also didn't want those same fans to die on the road to the venue. Ah, what a tight spot to be in. You two looked at the weather forecasts and they decided to go on. They also decided to offer an extra show on the following night, forfeiting any compensation. Those ticket holders who didn't feel like taking the road on the 5th could still see them live on the 6th. Bono the Edge and Adam Clayton personally called several radio stations in the Denver area to communicate the news. They said that the rain was really coming down at the moment, but the forecast said the weather would calm down by the time the concert was taking place. If anyone felt like coming over, the concert was happening. Everyone else could use their ticket for the extra concert on the following night. Fans started to arrive. They all stayed inside their cars waiting in the amphitheater parking space as the rain started to ease up a bit. And then, I kid you not, Bono came out in the parking lot bringing warm coffee to the cars. Say what you want about the man, but I rarely heard about a rock star being this humble and dedicated to their fans. In fact, I almost made this whole video to tell you about this single episode. Anyhow, Bono assured the fans that you two were going on with the performance and that it was going to be a general admission show. People could disregard the seat number printed on their ticket and just come close to the stage. Eventually, the rain slowed down to a gentle drizzle. And about 5,000 people, out of the 9,000 who had bought the ticket, attended the show. It just started with a bang, winning the crowd immediately, with all this drama coming to a happy end. I think cheering came quite naturally. A bit like putting a like to this video if you've been watching this far. Anyhow, it's time for me to close this story. Drop me a comment telling me which is your favorite YouTube song out of that gig. It's available on DVD with the title U2 Live at Red Rocks, Under a Blood Red Sky, but you can also find a good chunk of it on YouTube. I'll put a link in the description. Having said that, stay tuned for more music-related videos on this very channel. This was Simon Mas. Stay cool and keep your top hat on. Bye! Simon Mas! Music you love